Hello learners, welcome to K12 Aspire, the center of learning excellence. So in today's class in the chapter Dual Nature of Radiation and Light, we are going to discuss about photo current and stopping potential. So what is photo current? What is stopping potential? How they are developed? What are the deriv uh, what are the expressions and derivations to calculate them? And the questions which has been asked in your uh, J mains exam. That all things will be discussed in this class. So let's start this class. Okay, so let's begin this class. So in the last class, we had started a new chapter that is a uh, dual nature of radiation and matter. <coughs> so we came to know that radiation that is light and matter both have dual nature. That is particle nature as well as wave nature. Wave nature of radiation you already know and you have already learned in the previous chapters. Now in this chapter we are going to learn about the particle nature of light or you can say radiation. And to prove that light constitutes of particles we need to prove the photoelectric effect over uh, the matter. Okay, So we define photoelectric matter. Uh, in such a way that over metal surface if radiation of high frequency or low wavelength is uh, if there is radiation of high frequency or you can say low wavelength over a metal surface then the free electrons present over the metal surface ejects out may eject out okay so there was a condition for electron to come out so this effect is known as photoelectric effect why photoelectric? Because radiation is nothing but small small photons. It consists of uh, number of photons. So photoelectric. Electric means the electrons that are ejecting out. That's why the name is photoelectric effect. Okay. Then we have defined a uh, number of properties for photons. That what are photons? Its mass and all that. And what is the energy of each photon? This equation was important. Hc by lambda. Okay, or you can also call it HF. So, more is the frequency of radiation or light. More is the frequency of light, more will be the energy. Or we can say, instead of that, less is the wavelength of light, more will be the energy. Okay. And after that, we had discussed uh, Einstein's photoelectric equation, that is, maximum kinetic energy that uh, on, that an electron can have is E minus phi where E is the energy of photon and uh, phi is the work function of a particular matter. Okay, So when there is no collision electron comes out most efficiently and in that case that electron can have maximum kinetic energy that is E minus phi. Okay. Then we discuss threshold frequency and threshold wavelength. Okay, so all those discussion we have completed. So the students who have uh, not watched uh, first lecture, uh, I would recommend you to first of all watch that lecture, which is already available on our YouTube channel. And then you can uh, start from this class. Okay, so first of all, in this class, we are going to learn the two new topics. That is photo current and stopping potential. So, the discussion of today's lecture will comprise photo current and stopping potential. To understand these two phenomena, first of all, I will draw a figure. So there is a vacuum chamber like this. This is a vacuum chamber. Inside this vacuum chamber, there are two plates. This is cathode 
एंड दिस इज एनोड इट इज कनेक्टेड इट इज कनेक्टेड विद अ वायर and this wire is connected to a battery here there is an emitter as well this is emitter and here there is a battery okay so this is cathode here there is negative terminal here there is positive terminal this is a vacuum chamber and this is anode and this is battery and rheostat so you can alter the voltage rheostat here there is an emitter okay so this is positive and here there is negative because here there is positive and here it is negative okay so what happens uh, cat, uh, from this cathode it is also called emitter from this the electrons emits out moves out here this is a circuit so from this the electrons will go like this okay so electrons come out from cathode and uh, this is anode means it is called collector as it is here the charge is positive so that's why the electrons will get attracted towards it so electrons are moving from cathode towards anode and you, can you see that there is battery which is uh, which is switched on so there is flow of electrons okay in this circuit now these electrons are moving continuously from cathode to anode but can you see that when there will be the movement from cathode this is cathode let me write c and this is anode so let me write it e so when there is movement of cathode of uh, from cathode towards anode the electrons are moving continuously but at a particular time when the electron want to come out from cathode what will happen there will be the electron which will be already present uh, in front of it and we know that uh, two electrons are uh, having negative sign that's why they are going to get uh, they are going to repel each other so now here what will happen the electrons will get accumulated near this region in this region the electrons will get accumulated because that electron is opposed by the electron which is uh, present ahead of it okay and that's why this region is called space charge what is space charge the negative charge the negative charge in the region 
बिटवीन सी एंड ए ड्यू टू लार्ज नंबर ऑफ फोटो इलेक्ट्रॉन फाइव फोटो इलेक्ट्रॉन ओके जस्ट अ मोमेंट हियर इज जस्ट वन करेक्शन हाउ दिस मूवमेंट इज अकरिंग दैट वी डिड इन डिफाइंड हियर देर इज अ स्मॉल गैप एंड फ्रॉम दिस गैप देर इज रेडिएशन सॉरी फॉर द मिस्टेक रेडिएशन ऑफ लाइट दिस सर्किट हेल्प द मूवमेंट ऑफ इलेक्ट्रॉन बट एक्चुअली वाई द इलेक्ट्रॉन आर कमिंग फ्रॉम कैथोल द फोटो इलेक्ट्रिक इफेक्ट दैट वी हैव लर्न इन द लास्ट क्लास दैट इज द मेन पॉइंट let me change the color so you can see mm blue okay so from here there is light which is striking over the cathode plate okay so here there is radiation of light and it consists of nothing but photons so these are the photons which strike over the metal surface okay that's why from the cathode when the radiation of light strikes the cathode plate that is photons a large number of photons strike the plate the electrons will come out from the uh, surface of that metal and they are going to get uh, uh moved towards anode because it is it constitutes of positive charge electrons are attracted towards positive charge that's why this is the flow of electrons okay so now uh, you are clear that why electrons are moving okay photoelectric effect we already learned in the last class but here also there is a use of photo uh electric effect okay so the negative charge in the region between c and a due to large number of photo electrons photo electrons okay because this radiation of light is continuous over the cathode and that's why electrons are continuously moving but when more number of electron wants to move they will face a strong opposition a strong repulsion from the electrons which are which have already left the metal surface okay that's why there is a space charge now comes the new term that is photo current so if there is continuous movement of electrons across this circuit so flow of charge is nothing but current we know that current is i is equals to q by t and q is equals to n e by so there is flow of electrons inside the circuit so there will also be a current which will be developed inside the circuit which can be noted by ammeter okay so write down the current due to flow of photo electrons emitted by cathode emitted by cathode is called photo current okay so you get, uh, got my point okay so when there is flow of electrons inside the circuit the direction of current will be opposite to the flow of current because the direction of current is considered as direction of positive charge okay so if uh, electrons are moving from north to south it means the positive charge will be moving from south to north okay that's why the direction of current will be opposite to that of the flow of electrons okay now if i want to increase this current what can i do if i want to increase the current the number of electrons that are flowing should increase because i is equals to any by t 
if there are first of all five electrons so it will be 5e by t then it becomes 10 electrons 10e by t the number of electrons are increasing with that the current will also increase and to increase the number of electrons what we need to do if here on the anode the positive charge if it is increased okay here we have that's why rear state okay so we can uh, make the uh, flow such that this anode gets more positively charged more the positive charge on anode more will be the attraction of uh, electrons towards that anode plate okay and after that uh, okay let us first of all write then we'll discuss what happens on increasing positive potential positive potential on anode with respect to cathode more and more electrons are attracted towards A that is anode and photo current increases until it reaches saturation value so are you getting my point what is going to happen we can increase the current up to a particular saturation limit after that you cannot increase okay then a definite number of electrons will be attracted towards positive charge after that you cannot increase the motion of electrons okay and that uh, limiting value is called saturation value okay and after that that photo current or you can say current inside the circuit cannot increase so it is going to increase and then it will reach a saturation value okay now comes the next term that is stopping potential okay so what do you mean by stopping potential for that first of all let us write stopping potential stopping potential now uh, to increase the photo current what we have done we have made anode positive more positive with respect to cathode now what happens if instead of uh, increasing the positive potential of a if i decrease if anode becomes negative with respect to cathode it is negative okay so if anode is negative what will happen when the electrons are moving towards anode it will experience a force of repulsion when there was positive charge they were attracted towards the anode but now there is negative charge and if there is negative charge which is present over anode the electron is also having negative charge so negative charge and negative charge will repel each other so the electrons will experience a repulsion when they try to move forward towards anode okay and that's why what is going to happen you increase you keep on increasing increasing and increasing this negative potential until a limiting value okay and that what is that limiting value let us define that look first of all if we apply negative potential negative potential on 
एनोड विथ रिस्पेक्ट टू कैथोड सो वॉट इज गोइंग टू हैपन द फोटो इलेक्ट्रॉन्स will be repelled by e and photo current will decrease photo current will decrease on further increasing negative potential okay so till now we have discussed that okay let me make this figure so that you can get the understanding okay so this was the case now here initially on this anode there was positive charge that we have uh, given now what happens here i have made anode negative with respect to cathode so now the electrons will experience a force of repulsion if they want to move towards anode and that's why what will happen this electrons will find a resistance to move okay and that's why if you keep on increasing this negative potential if this negative potential keep on increasing over anode a point will come that now no electron even the fastest electron that was moving is now not able to reach to anode and finally the current because if the flow of electrons will decrease means the current will decrease if the current will decrease there will be a particular value of uh, negative potential of anode that at that point the current will decrease decrease and finally it will reach the value of zero that potential is defined as stopping potential why stopping because now it is stopping the flow of current inside the circuit flow of current stops means the flow of electrons stop okay so let us write it further on increasing negative potential on a okay so now what will happen a situation arrives when no electron can reach anode and photo current becomes zero okay so now we are going to write the definition of stopping potential that is the minimum magnitude minimum magnitude of negative potential on anode with respect to cathode which can just stop photo current which can just stop photo current is called stopping potential so the minimum magnitude of negative potential beyond that if you decrease further 
then there will be more resistance uh, experienced by the electron but we want that limiting value that minimum value of negative potential on anode with respect to cathode which can just stop the photo current that potential is called stopping potential okay so let us make the graph so you can understand it Okay, so this is a graph of photo current. And anode potential. Positive with respect to cathode. Okay, so what will happen? We have seen that if we increase this anode potential, if we make it positive from positive to more and more positive, then the photo current is going to increase. Okay, in that case, we have observed like this. Okay, and we have seen that if we make anode negative with respect to cathode, if the anode plate becomes negative with respect to cathode, then the photo current keeps on decreasing and it reaches a limiting value that uh, at the point when the photo current becomes zero. Okay. So this is shown like this. Let me make a continuous graph. The graph comes like this. Okay, so this is a saturation value. Saturation current. Okay, and this is stopping potential. Okay. So this is the point here you can see that if you are decreasing the uh, anode potential then with that the photo current is also decreasing and finally it reaches the value of zero here uh, the potential is having a definite value but y axis uh, is zero that's why this is the point where photo current has become zero and that potential that particular potential is defined as stopping potential okay now we are going to find if uh, I want to make the current flow of current as zero, I need to define the formula for stopping current. So uh, stopping potential. So let us define how to calculate the stopping potential. We'll make a small derivation. We'll see a small derivation. Derivation. for stopping potential that is called V0 okay so what was the case there was a cathode plate and there was a there was an anode plate cathode anode if here there is zero volt here there will be this will be uh, negative with respect to cathode so let us say that is minus v0 and v0 is the stopping potential here there is negative charge now what is happening when there is the light radiation or you can say photons striking over the cathode plate the electrons free electrons are moving 
from cathode towards anode where they experience a strong repulsion okay so while moving from c to a electron works against what force is repelling it it is the force of repulsion and that force is because of the uh, negative uh, negative charge that is the electron present over anode because that is negatively charged okay so that is called as electrostatic force work against electrostatic force electrostatic force on the expense of its kinetic energy yesterday we learned that when uh, the photon strikes over the electrons the electrons uh, come out with a particular energy of its own that is the kinetic energy uh, initially photon was having let's say 8 electron volt of energy with that energy that photon uh, get striked over an electron and one electron came out the work function of that electron was 2 electron volt that's why out from 8 2 was lost in the work function remaining was the 6 now if there is no collision and no energy loss then 6 electron volt will be its kinetic energy so this kinetic energy will be used by this electron now it can be 6 it can be 5 it can be 4 it can be any value but it will have some kinetic energy or it can also not have any kinetic energy but if we assume that it has some kinetic energy when it comes out then only it can move so when an electron comes out with its kinetic energy this kinetic energy will be used against electrostatic force okay and that's why the work done by that electron is defined as the charge on that electron into delta b okay so what is delta v it is the difference in the potential so at stopping potential even the fastest electron the fastest electron which is having maximum kinetic energy cannot reach a then only there will be no current right cannot reach a and photo current becomes zero <coughs> photo current becomes zero that's why we will say maximum kinetic energy is equals to work done okay so the the electron which is having maximum kinetic energy that energy will be used by that electron against electrostatic force and what is the electron doing it is doing the work against that repulsive force so maximum kinetic energy will be equals to work done what is the maximum kinetic energy A max is equals to E. What is the charge? That is uh, the charge on an electron. That is E into delta V. That is 0 minus uh, V0. So V0. So the stopping potential V0 will be K max by E. Okay. This is stopping potential. Maximum kinetic energy divided by the charge on an electron okay now kmx is also equals to the energy of an photon of a photon minus work function of a metal so 
we have v0 is equals to kmx divided by e so instead of kmx i will write e minus phi divided by e so v0 is equals to e by e minus phi by e so this is equals to hc by lambda e is equals to hc by lambda so we'll write hc by lambda this equation is also important hc upon e lambda minus phi by e you just have to remember this basic equation that is v0 is equals to kmx by e and kmx is equals to e minus phi from that you can derive it also you can say it v0 is equals to hc by lambda hc by e into 1 by lambda minus phi by e so now it is actually a straight line equation y is equals to m hc by e is constant x is uh, 1 by lambda minus c okay so this is a straight line equation so a straight line graph can be drawn for it y is equals to mx minus c okay so this is 1 by lambda of radiation this is stopping potential that is v0 okay so what is the constant it is minus phi by e so this is the negative value and it will go like this here you will make it dotted okay phi by e from here the graph actually starts 1 by lambda 0 this is threshold wavelength lambda 0 is threshold wavelength that we have defined and this is theta that is the slope equals to 10 theta equals to h c by e equals to h c by e okay so this is a straight line graph now let us solve some questions based on that okay before that one more thing you need to understand that uh, stopping potential that we have defined uh, we are going to solve the, some questions uh, previous questions asked from this topic but before that we need to understand that how stopping potential can be affected how it can be changed okay so we know that v0 is equals to e minus phi by e what is e minus phi kmx so v0 is kmx upon e so stopping potential depends on depends upon c e is equals to hc by lambda so e lambda minus phi by e okay h is Planck's constant is that constant yes c is the speed of light it is constant everywhere e is the uh, charge on an electron that is constant what changes is lambda and phi okay so it depends upon lambda of radiation or you can say frequency instead of hc by lambda i can write it as hf so lambda of radiation or you can say or it can be frequency of radiation and the other thing is phi that is work function first and second is work function work function of metal because the electrons are coming out from the cathode so cathode is made up of which material that is going to affect the 
uh, work function and work function affects stopping potential so work function of metal denoted by pi okay so on increasing the intensity of light the intensity of light that is striking over the cathode plate okay the intensity is going to affect how many number of photons are striking over the plate so if mo more is the intensity yesterday we have discussed more is the intensity of light more will be the number of electrons that strike over the plate on increasing intensity of light number of photons increases which increase which increase number of ejected electrons the electrons that eject out are called photo electrons so if the number of electrons increase we know i is equal to n e by t more is the number of electrons that eject out more will be the current so we will say and hence photo current increases but can stopping potential change see if you increase we will say but each sorry energy of each photon that is e yesterday we have discussed that the energy of each photon remains same on increasing intensity of light the energy that each photon have does not change number of photons will increase but the energy of each photon will remain same for a given wavelength for a yellow light of 50 watt or 100 watt number of photons will be more but the energy of each photon will be same so energy of each photon is still same so we will say hence if e is same here e is same work function of a metal is same okay so if you increase intensity the work function of the metal is not going to increase the minimum energy of an electron free electron of that metal that energy is not going to change that is the work function right so e will same pi will be same and that's why stopping potential will also remain same even if you increase intensity of light stopping potential will not change so but energy of each photon is still the same hence stopping potential v0 remains unaffected on changing intensity of light intensity of light here i have left space so that we can make a graph just uh, next to it see what i am trying to say here here there is v and here there is i so we have learned the graph that the current uh, keeps on increasing if we this is anode okay so if we increase the positive uh, potential on the anode then the current keeps on increasing because more number of electrons are attracted okay so we have learned a graph like this and we have seen that on decreasing the value uh, the of the anode with respect to cathode 
when the potential on anode becomes negative with respect to cathode in that case the current keeps on decreasing and it reaches a value limiting value of zero and that potential was stopping potential so this was the graph for that okay so let's say here the intensity of light was i now if you increase the intensity of light further to 2i 3i then what will happen in that case let's say we need to make the graph start from here this is from here will start the negative potential now this is for intensity i now if i increase this is going to be a straight line after that okay it is not going to decrease now if you increase the intensity of light the current is going to increase two i means intensity of light is doubled in that case the potential stopping potential will still remain the same that is v0 can you see that stopping potential will still remain the same just the current photo current is going to increase if you increase the intensity of light okay this is 3i okay i is photo current so photo current increases if we increase the intensity of light but the stopping potential v0 v0 is stopping potential that is not going to change now let us write let us try to solve questions this has been asked in the uh, j2004 exam the figure shows variation of photo current with anode potential for a photosensitive surface photosensitive surface for three different radiations let ie ib and ic be intensities and fa fb and fc be the frequencies frequencies of the curves a b and c so which of the following is correct that you have to say that is okay let me first of all make the graph so this is a this is b and this is c this is i this is v this is negative stopping potential okay let us write down the options a fa equals to fb ia not equals to ib then b fa equals to fc and ia equals to ic then c fa equals to fb and ia equals to ib and d fb equals to fc and iab equals to ic 
so the figure mm -hmm. shows variation of photo current with anode potential for a photosensitive surface for three different radiations okay uh, let ia ib and ic be intensities uh, so intensities for the each curve a b and c is ia ib and ic and fa fb and fc be the frequencies of curve a b and c so frequency of that light is given fa fb and fc now you have to choose which of the following is correct so you have to compare between the intensity and i is not the current i is the intensity and you have to compare between uh, the frequencies okay so here we can see that b and c b and c is having same photo current the photo current for b and c curve is same here can you see that they are uh, on the same line so we'll first, we have first of all seen that b and c let me change the color b and c have same photo current means they have if the photo current is same then the intensity will also be the same okay photo current means the current uh, that is flowing in uh, because of the flow of electrons so if flow of electrons in both the cases is same then the uh, intensity of light that is striking over the surface will also be the same that's why they will have same intensity that is ib will be equals to i c now we have to compare the frequencies okay so a and b curve a and b have same stopping potential a and b have same stopping potential so they have same frequencies that is f a will be equals to f b see how v0 is equals to h c by e lambda instead of h c by lambda can i write it h f by lam uh, h f by e minus phi by e so if v0 is same now a uh, function uh, look v0 is equals to instead of h c by lambda i will write h f by e h f minus phi divided by e phi is fixed because uh the metal surfaces uh are the same here it is given for three different radiations a photo photosensitive surface for the radiations are different but the surface is same so the work function phi for each surface will be same e is also constant so if v0 is fixed uh can we say that frequency will also be same because h is planck's constant right so if stopping potential is same it means the frequency is also c okay why are we checking the frequency because the options are given in such a way that we have to compare frequency and intensity so intensity we have compared that if uh, b and c have same photo current the photo current is same it means that intensity for that uh, two curves will also be have been also be same that's why we have seen ib equals to ic and a and b have same photo uh, stopping potential here uh, v0 is same for a and b can you see that it starts at same location for a and b and that's why we have seen that frequency will also be same that's why option a says fa equals to fb and ia is not equals to ib that is more suitable fa is not equals to fc here fa is equals to fb but it it has been given ia equals to ib and this is not the case here you can see that for ia and ib the current are different okay that's why that option is correct one more question we are going to solve so in this question more than one option can be correct so there is the graph of stopping potential 
वर्सेस लेमड़ा एंड वन अपॉन लेमड़ा सो यू हैव टू सिलेक्ट विच ग्राफ इज करेक्ट The graph is between here it is v0 lambda here it is v0 1 by lambda v0 1 by lambda and v0 lambda so for v0 lambda one graph is like this the other graph is like this and for v0 1 by lambda one graph is like this the other graph is like this okay this is a b c and d okay so we have learnt the equation the equation was v0 is equals to hc by e lambda minus pi by e so y is equals to m into x minus c so the constant was minus 5 by e and that's why we have seen that uh, the value of the constant will be negative y now uh, the slope is positive that is hc by e so if the slope is positive in that case if you make the graph of v0 versus 1 by lambda the slope must be positive and the positive slope is given in option c okay so this is correct now uh, if this is correct it means this is incorrect now comes a and d out of a and d uh, first of all we know that if we increase the lambda then v0 will decrease they are inversely proportional okay so here the graph should be falling graph okay and uh, out of a and d you can see that for a the graph is falling okay and also it is the equation of v0 uh, versus lambda it is a rectangular hyperbola that's why a is correct simply just you have to understand that if lambda is increasing in that case v0 should decrease okay here it is in the denominator right that's why if lambda increase v0 decrease so graph should be falling if it is directly between v0 and lambda here it is between v0 and 1 by lambda and that's why we have uh, made the relation of a straight line okay so these are the simple mathematical equations i hope you have learnt it in mathematics as well so that's all for today's class we'll meet in the next class so thank you all for joining this class goodbye If you need to be part of our learning journey then there are three things you need to do right now Firstly like our video next subscribe to our channel and finally click the bell icon so that you will never miss a notification from us